So you have either drawn or are ready to draw your self-portrait using the facial proportions that we discussed in the last video. In this video, we're gonna take a quick look at how you do the shadows and it's all about observation. You wanna be closely looking at where the darks and lights on your face and your, either your picture or in the mirror. So I speed through some of these things. As you're watching this first part, it's just going to be me drawing the self-portrait. Pay close attention to how I am measuring because on your final, it'll be a good idea for you to do that measuring with the pencil and making small adjustments. And smaller adjustments can be made even later before you're doing your shadows. And you will also see how I kind of take care of that as well. Have fun. Can't wait to see your beautiful wanted posters. Now my self-portrait is ready to add some shadows. I know that there are some adjustments I could do in the drawing to make it look more realistic, but this is close enough for right now. So whether you're using a picture that has been printed off or you're using a mirror, you want to look for those darker areas, the shadows. And you're going to start with the darkest areas first when working with pencil. And so I want to use either a darker um, numbered pencil or I want to be pressing harder and using my pressure. If you're using cross hatching or stippling, you're going to start with the more dots, start with the dots in the darker areas and slowly work your way down. So I have, if I'm looking right here into the hair from my hairline, I'm going to come up here. Now that I've made some more minor adjustments to my drawing and I've got the big areas blocked into the hair, I'm ready to start on the face where I'm going to start with my darkest shadows and work my way up.
Notice how I keep referring back to my reference photo or to the mirror if you're using a mirror so that I can find the shapes and the placement of the correct shadows. I also about now notice that my darks in the background are not dark enough, but that's okay. You can always go darker. It's harder to go lighter. So I can go in and I can darken up areas as I need to and erase a little bit if I need to lighten other areas. So there's a quick little um, adding in of those shadows. Now you don't have to do every single shadow and make it all match at exactly perfectly. Those didn't, but the idea is that you give it a shot. I'm going to add, I may go back in and add a little bit of a darker background behind here so that I can, um, so that it will just create a little bit more of something behind me as you might see in some of those, and it will bring my lighter areas out. And then of course my wording for the wanted poster would come out and around beyond that. And if it looks a little scratchy, like with the cross hatching or the stippling, that's okay. Oftentimes the art processes that they used in those times would have looked very cross hatchy. They didn't have a lot of things to blend and smooth what they needed. So have some fun, do your best, and we'll be seeing you next time. Bye.